You must desire heavenly. You must desire that heaven is your final place. Everything you do must direct you to heaven. See heaven. Pray heaven. Wish for heaven. Love heaven. That was the message of the time. You know, nobody invests you don't invest on a leased property or a hired home where you are renting. Where you are renting, my friend, you can't be planting and breaking, build, breaking the building and putting new features. You are renting. It's not your property. And the Bible says, well, not of this world. So why are these Christians investing in the world and less investment for heaven? And God has told us that there are ways to invest to heaven. Like when you give to the poor, he says you are investing into heaven. So why are we not investing unto something that is eternal? Why? 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 Why are you spending time on moth, on things that will perish, be buried and go away? What is your investment of heaven on a daily basis? Yes, you are investing on your body. Yes, you go to the gym every day. Yes, you have bought new clothes for yourself. Well, yes, yes, yes. You have made your environment. You are sleeping on an ivory bed, air-conditioned bedroom and everything. Yes, everything is beautiful around you. You have even invested in the so-called insurance so that when you die, your children can have something. You, you, you're investing even on a funeral policy so that you can be buried with dignity. But have you invested where it matters most? Heaven what? Heaven what, my friends? Heaven what? Heaven what? That is where we will reside forever. Are we investing heaven what? Do you love heaven? Do you even understand because there are even less sermons about heaven. So even an average Christian, like I'm saying, they can't tell you anything about heaven. They won't even know whether heaven is that way or that way or that way or that way. Where is it? How is it? There is no aspiration of the heavenly things. That is why some of them, when they're about to die, they're going to say, Lord, no, you can't take me. I don't know where I'm going there. They would want to remain with what is familiar. Because they are, they are not sure. Nobody has told them. Nobody has preached with to them. Hallelujah. That is why I'm saying when you look at those books that are written 100 years ago or so, the pastors were preaching about heaven. The problem is that the pastor of today himself does not know anything about heaven. So there's nothing he can give you. Because he himself, even if you can ask him a basic question, that man of God, I saw the Bible speaks about three heavens. He does not know what that three heavens is. He say, hey, my friend, die, let me research that one. So heaven is a message, my friend. It's an ultimate message that we will go home one day. That message must be brought into the church so that people can understand that do I want to miss heaven for a momentary pleasure of sin?